Okay, so I'm going to do a card trick based on the number 27. Uh, and this is my all-time favorite math card trick. I'm going to show it for you today, and I'm going to explain it. Uh, and I found this trick in an old um, 1950s math book written by Martin Gardner. And for me, it is the math card trick with the most beautiful maths behind it out of all of them. And because it is a math card trick, it does involve a lot of long, tedious counting, but bear with us here. So th this uh, involves 27 cards, so I'm going to take 27 off, uh, and this is a genuine count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 27 is actually one of my um, favorite numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, because uh, it's a cube number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, that's 27 cards. Uh, and this works with any 27 cards, and, and none of this trick is sleight of hand, none of it is uh, YouTube magic magic where I'm using something sneaky or a sneaky edit and I'll explain the trick afterwards so it's okay. But this is how it works. You get 27 cards, you shuffle them up. I'm actually going to get uh, Brady to both film and be the volunteer. So uh, I'll flick through which, do you want to tap which one you want? Which one of these? Just, just okay, that one there. Do you want to show the camera that card? Don't let me see it obviously. And do you want to put it back in wherever you want? Okay, now all you need to do is just remember what that card was. And believe me, people in the comments will mention afterwards if you don't. Uh, uh, Brady, what's your favourite number from 1 to 27, if you had to pick, pick a number? 10. 10. Any particular reason why 10? I just like how it looks. You like it? Okay. Are you looking for your card, by the way? What I want you to do is uh, have a look and see if you can spot which pile your card goes into. Uh, and um, people may have seen this trick done before. It's a variation. In fact, it's a generalisation on a 21 card trick. Which pile is it in? It's in that pile. In the middle pile there. Okay, I'm going to pick them up from, uh, from well, from the viewers uh, right to left. Uh, and what people tend to do is they do this tedious counting out each time. And what I'm actually doing is, last time I memorized all the cards, and so I knew when you told me which pile, I'd narrowed it down to nine possible cards it could be. If I do it again, because of the way I'm dealing it out, if you tell me which pile it's in this time, I will narrow it down to one of uh, three possible cards. Which pile is it in this time? Uh, this time it is in, it's in the middle. This pile. is the one again. There we are. Okay, purely coincidence. I'll pick them up again. Um, and then if I do it one last time, again dividing by three, and this is why twenty-seven is three cubed. Uh, if you say which one it's in, I will know, having memorized all the cards, exactly one in one, or I, I will know precisely which card it is. And that's just the pure information of this trick. Which one's it in? It's that, that one over there. Cool. Okay. So now, um, to be fair, all of that uh, wasn't true. Well, the numbers were true, and the number of cards that could have been going from 27 to 9 to 3 to 1, that is completely accurate. I wasn't bothering to memorize them, though. I was doing something else slightly different. Um, what was your card? You can tell me now. It was the King of Hearts. King of Hearts, for And what was your favorite number? 10. Okay, watch this. Here we go. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. King of Hearts. Uh, so this trick, you can put the card, even though you don't know what it is, as long as they tell you which pile it's in, you can put it anywhere in that deck. So if you say any number, after three lots of dealing it out, I can put the card into that position. And uh, that is my all-time favorite maths-based card trick. Do you want to know how it works? Yes, please. This is, this is brilliant. Okay, so uh, can I have some of your famous brown paper? There we go. All right, okay, excellent. Now, let's look at why this trick works. Now, um... Okay, you're gonna have to bear with me here. I'm gonna set up a slightly unusual way to look at the cards. Because when you get the 27 cards, the very last step, if we go from the end of the trick, I pick them up into, there were three piles of nine cards, let's say. From now on, I'm gonna call the top one the zeroth pile, and then the first pile and the second pile. And there's a reason for that in a moment. But just bear with me while I, while I set up some notation. So when the cards go back together, there are nine cards in the top pile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that was what I called the zeroth pile on top. Then there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the first pile. And the bottom one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That was the second pile. And as it turns out, your one was the king of hearts. That ended up being the tenth card down. That was, because you said at the very beginning, you said uh, your favorite number is 10, and your king of hearts ended up there. And so now, when you think about it, these top three from the final piles, because this is the very last top, middle, and bottom pile, that top one came from the previous top pile. So that was the previous zeroth pile, that was the previous middle pile, that was the previous bottom pile, that was the previous top, middle, bottom, 
top, middle, bottom. And so actually if you watch it, you can see how that happens because I've picked them up from the second time. I've got the top, the middle and the bottom packets, each of nine cards, I put them together. I deal out the next three piles and the first three come from that top pack of nine and then the next three come from that top pack of nine and then the next three from the same top pack of nine. So that's why over here, the top three come from the previous top zeroth pile. The next three of each one come from the middle pile. So that's the first three off the middle, next three off the middle, next three off the middle. And I've got nine left. That was the previous bottom pile. And that's why now I get three from the bottom, three from the bottom, three from the bottom. So they end up going down like that. And then actually within those, and if you get some cards and you start playing around with this, Within the final ordering, it turns out from the very, very first time you put them together, this is the top, the middle, the bottom, the top, the middle, the bottom, the top, the middle, the bottom, the top. And then don't, don't lose too much sleep over exactly why this happens. If you get a pack of cards and deal it, you'll start to see why. And what you end up here is this is the ordering from the first time we dealt the cards out. That's the ordering from the second time we dealt the cards out, and that's the ordering from the third time we dealt the cards out. And to get it here at tenth, I can see that. To get this position here, it's the zeroth, zero, first, or top, top, middle. And so when each time Brady pointed to where his card was, the first time I put that pile back on top, the second time I put that pile in, back on top, the third time I put that pile in the middle. The first time I put that pile back on top, the second time I put that pile back on top, the third time I put that pile in the middle. In fact, Brady, do you want to pick a different number? So say I told you my favourite number was 13, what would you have done? Okay, so 13, I need to put 12 cards on top of that, and 12 is 1, 9, 1, 3, and no units, so I'm going to put that on the top, the middle, the middle. 13 is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, see, 0, top, middle, middle. But th the way I work it out is I'm actually working it out in base 3, because this whole trick uses base 3 ternary numbers, which I think are absolutely amazing. And the first time you put the piles back together, you're doing the units column of your base 3 number. The next time you put them back together, you're doing the 3's column. And then the last time, you're doing the 9's column. And so when you give me your number, I work out that number in base 3, and then that tells me how to put the piles back together. Okay, so now we're going to redo the very uh, first trick I did in effective, almost slow motion, in annotated mode, if you will. And so uh, you had a look at one card, and then I started dealing these, and then I talked to you about your favourite number, and you said 10. Uh, you're looking for the King of Hearts, and I'm thinking, how am I going to get that King of Hearts, or I don't know what card it is, how am I going to get whatever the card is to the 10th position? And 10, uh, 9 goes into that once, and so I, I want to get 9 cards on top. So I actually have to put it in the top, the top, and then the middle. Uh, so has the King of Hearts gone past? Yep. Where was it? It was there. Okay, so now I now know it has to go top, top, middle. So when I pick them up from left to right, these two I don't care about. That can be bottom, that can be middle. The King of Hearts is in this one, so it has to go on top, which means it's going to be one of the first nine to get dealt out. And so it's going to be either the top card in the next piles, or the second card in the next pass, which it happens to be, or the third card. And then the rest we actually don't care about because uh, those other two piles, I know it wasn't in those. These are just padding to get it into the correct position. So now, uh, which one was it in? It's the middle one. Okay, so again, it's top, top, middle. So it has to go top again. And if you watch, when I pick them up, I still pick them up in the same order, but I put them together in a different order. So that goes on top, and then I get this last one and I'll just shove it underneath. So now I know it's on top. In fact, I know it's in the top three of the top pile. So when I go down this time, it has to be the top card. There it is. And then the rest go on top. And then the last time it has to go in the middle. And so you can kind of see what's going to happen now, because if it goes in the middle, it's going to get nine cards put on top of it. It's going to be the top card in the middle pile. It's going to be the tenth card. So it was in this one? Yep. Oh, how about that? Pick that one up first. Pick that one up and put it underneath. So it's the middle one. Put that one underneath like that, and so now it has to be the tenth card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, boom. So in fact, one way you can think about it is I like drawing a time 
versus card height diagram. Uh, and so the first time you do it, this is the first time you deal out, you've got the bottom pack, you've got the middle pack, and you've got the top pack when you put them back together. And the reason I use 0, 1, and 2 is that's your units column and ternary. The second time, you've got the bottom pack, you've got the middle pack, you've got the top pack, and again, that's 0, 1, and 2, and that's the second time you deal. And then the third time you deal, again, you've got the bottom, the middle pack, and the top pack, that's 0, 1, and 2. So they're the, the three packs when you put them back together. And in fact, this is your units column, or that, that's your ones column, that there's your threes column, and that there's your nines column. So any numbers, so if you want to put, let's say, 15 on top, to get 15, you're going to need two threes, one nine, and no units. So it's going to go top, bottom, middle to put 15 cards on top, and it'll end up being the 16th card. If someone at home wants to do this trick, do they have to be pretty good at maths? They, they have two options. You can either be pretty good at maths or you can spend a lot of your free time practicing until your brain gets used to doing this, which, to be fair, are both exactly the same thing. Maths is all about practicing something and, and, and developing a new way of thinking for your brain to get used to it. So, I mean, I either option, learn maths or learn card tricks, you're ending up with the same skill set, to be honest. You said at the start this was your favorite trick to some extent. It is. What, what is it that, there are lots of tricks, what is it about that one that really resonates with you? What I like, the, on one hand, it takes a trick a lot of people, people know the 21 card trick, where you put it back in the middle each time and then it ends up being the middle card. And so people kind of know that, but they don't know why it works. Whereas this one, you know why it works and then you can do so much more with it. And there's a huge difference in, in math, indeed, in anything, between just memorizing the steps so you know how to do it versus knowing why those steps get you where you want to be. And so this utilizes the advantage of knowing why the steps are doing something, and then you can tweak it as you go. So instead of always putting it in the middle, you can put it anywhere you want because you understand how it works. Because you're putting three piles back together three times, there are 27 possible arrangements of putting it back across the trick, which correspond to all 27 possible positions. In fact, you can do this trick with a lot more cards. Uh, if you really want to, uh, you can do it with as many, it's the number of piles to the power of how many times you deal the cards out. If you get 10 billion cards, which is a lot of cards, uh, and you deal them out into 10 piles 10 times, you can put any of those 10 billion cards into any position just through 10 deals. Although admittedly, you, you, are, you are dealing a, a million cards into each uh, pile, so it does take a very long time. In fact, in Martin Gardner's uh, book, uh, Magic, Maths and Mystery, he describes that if you want to do the 10 million card version, uh, his, sorry, 10 billion card version, his recommendation is to be very, very careful as you're doing the 10 piles of 10 each time, because if you make a mistake, uh, very few audiences will sit through that trick for a second time.